Hello, my name is Dennis Fox, and I am director of OUE Theater, which is located on the eastern campus of Ohio University in St. Clairsville, Ohio. We are a very small theater setup, and Scattered Shakespeare is our first attempt at a virtual production. Scattered Shakespeare is an actor-centered experience. Every piece, every approach to each piece was chosen by the actors involved, and we use that as a starting point to develop and rehearse these pieces. The past year has been a devastating experience for everybody involved in live theater. Everyone here at OUE Theater connected to Scattered Shakespeare is very happy to share this performance with you. Um, we think you'll find parts of it surprising, possibly, but we hope you enjoy it. Thank you. The origin of my Malvolio was um, this piece has been an attractive piece to me for quite some time, but one I never thought I would get the chance to play. Um, I have been playing with it on and off for several years. Uh, a few years ago, somebody said that I was giving them a Liberace vibe while I was performing it. Um, so I started to run with that. And then as I progressed with it, I realized that not only was I giving a Liberace vibe, but there was also a Tim Curry as Dr. Frankenfurter kind of vibe too. And I thought how interesting and fun it would be to marry those two things and see how that would reflect Malvolio. Um, so that is the origin of my Malvolio. <laughs> But fortune, all is fortune. Mariah once told me she did affect me, and I have heard herself come thus near that should she fancy it should be one of my complexion. Mm, besides, she uses me with a more exalted respect than anyone else that follows her. <sighs> what should I think on it? Hmm. To be. Count Malvolio. <laughs> there is example for it. The lady of the Stracci married the yeoman of the wardrobe. <sighs> Having been three months married to her, sitting in my state, and calling my officers about me in my branched velvet gown. Having come from a daybed where I have left Olivia sleeping. <laughs> And then to have the humor of state, and after a demure travel of regard, telling them I know my place as I would they should do theirs, to ask for my kinsman Toby. <laughs> uh, seven of my people, with an obedient start, make out for him. I frown the while, and perchance wind up my watch, or play with my... <laughs> Mm. Some rich jewel. Toby approaches, curtsies there to me. I extend my hand to him thus, quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control, saying, Cousin Toby, my fortunes having cast me on your niece, give me this prerogative of speech. You must amend your drunkenness. <laughs> nah. Besides, you waste the treasure of your time with a foolish knight, one Sir Andrew. Huh. What employment have we here? By my life, this is my lady's hand. Why, these be her very C's, her U's, and her T's, and thus she makes her great P's. Tis in contempt of question her hand. To the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes? Ugh. I your leave wax soft. Ugh. And the impressure, her Lucrece, with which she uses to seal. Tis my lady. Ugh. To whom should this be? Jove knows I love, but who? Lips do not move, no man must know. No man must know. Ugh. What follows, the numbers altered. 
no man must know. Should this be the Malvolio? I may command where I adore, but silence like a Lucrece knight with bloodless stroke my heart doth gore. M-O-A-I doth sway my life. M-O-A-I doth sway my life? Nay, but first, let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, I may command where I adore. Why, she may command me. I serve her. She is my lady. Why, this is evident to any formal capacity. There is no obstruction in this. And then the end. What should that alphabetical position portend? Oh, if I could make this resemble something in me. Softly. M-O-A-I. Mm. M. -O -A -I. M. Mal why, that begins my name, M! Oh, but then there is no consonancy in the sequel that suffers under probation. A should follow, but O does, then I comes behind. Oh, M-O-A-I. This simulation is not as the former, and yet to crush this a little, it would bow to me for... for... For every one of these letters is in my name! Oh, soft. Here follows prose. If this fall into thy hand, revolve. In my stars I am above thee, but be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Thy fates open their hands, let thy blood and spirit embrace them. And to inure thyself to what thou art like to be, cast thy humble sloth and appear fresh. Be opposite with a kinsman, surly with servant. Let thy tongue tang arguments of state. Put thyself into the trick of singularity. She thus advises thee that sighs for thee. <gasps> Remember who commended thy yellow stockings and wished to see thee ever cross-gartered? I say remember. Go to, thou art made if thou desirest to be so. If not, let me see thee a steward still and fellow of servants and not worthy to touch fortune's fingers. Farewell, she that would alter services with thee, the fortunate unhappy. Oh, daylight and champion discovers not more. Why, this is open. Oh, I will be proud. I will read politic authors. I will baffle Sir Toby. I will cast off gross acquaintance. I will be point devise the very man. Oh, I do not now fool myself to let imagination jade me, for every reason excites to this, that my lady loves me. Oh, she did commend my yellow stockings of late. She did praise my leg being cross-gartered, and in this she manifests herself to my love, and with a kind of injunction drives me to these habits of her liking. Oh, I thank my stars. I am happy. <laughs> I will be strange, stout, in yellow stockings and cross garter, even with the swiftness of putting on. Oh, Jove and my stars be praised. Oh, oh here is yet a postscript. Hmm. Thou cannot choose but know who I am. If thou entertainest my love, let it appear in thy smiling. Thy smiles become thee well. Therefore, in my presence, still smile. Dear my sweet, I prithee. Oh, Jove, I thank thee. I will smile. I will do everything thou wilt have me! <laughs>
drawn with a team of little atomies athwart men's noses as they lie asleep. <laughs> Her wagon spokes made of long spinner's legs. The cover of the wings of grasshoppers. The traces of the smallest spider's web. The collars of the moonshine's watery beams. <sighs> Her whip of cricket's bone. The lash of film, ha! Her wagoner? A small gray-coated gnat, not so big as a round little worm, pricked from the lazy finger of a maid. <laughs> Her chariot? Ha! An empty hazelnut, made by the joiner squirrel or old grub. Time out of mind, the fairies' coachmakers. And in this state, she gallops night by night through lovers' brains. And then they dream of love, Romeo. Or courtiers' knees who dream on curtsies straight. Or lawyers' fingers who straight dream on fees. <laughs> Or ladies' lips, who straight on kisses dream, ah, which oft the angry mab with blisters plagues, because their breaths with sweetmeats tainted are. <laughs> Sometime she gallops o'er a courtier's nose, and then dreams he of smelling out a suit. Sometime comes she with a tithe pig's tail, Tickling a parson's nose as he lies asleep. And then dreams he of another benefice. Sometime she gallops over a soldier's neck. And then dreams he of cutting foreign throats, of breeches, ambuscados, Spanish blades, of how far it fathom deep. And then an arm drums in his ear. At which he starts and wakes, and thus being frighted, swears a prayer <laughs> or two, and sleeps again. <sighs> this is that very Mab, Romeo, that plats the manes of horses in the night and bakes the elf flocks in foul, sluttish airs, which, once untangled, much misfortune bodes. This is the hag, when maids lie on their backs that presses them and learns them first to bear, making them women of good carriage. This is she! True. I talk of dreams, which are the children of an idle brain, begot of nothing but vain fantasy, which is as inconstant as the wind who woos even now the frozen bosom of the north. And being angered, puffs away from thence. Turning his face to the dew dropping south. We are doing a much ado about nothing, a scene between Beatrice and Benedict. And we asked ourselves, what if Beatrice decides enough is enough? Lady Beatrice? Uh, have you wept all this while? Yea, and I will weep a while longer. Oh, I will not desire that. You have no reason. I do it freely. Surely I do think your fair cousin is wronged. <laughs> How much might the man deserve of me that would right her? Is there any way to show such friendship? A very even way, but no such friend. May a man do it? It is a man's office, but not yours. I 
do love nothing in the world so well as you. Is not that strange? <laughs> as strange a thing, I know not. It were as possible for me to say I love nothing so well as you. But oh, believe me not, and yet I lie not. I confess nothing, nor I deny nothing. I am sorry for my cousin. By my sword, Beatrice, thou lovest me. Oh, do not swear and eat it. I will swear by it that you love me, and I'll make him eat it that says I love not you. You do not eat your word? With no sauce that can be devised to it, I protest I love thee. Well, then God forgive me. What offense, sweet Beatrice? You have stayed me in a happy hour. I was about to protest. I loved you. And do so with all thy heart. I love you with so much of my heart that none is left to protest. <sighs> Come, bid me do anything for thee. Kill Claudio. <laughs> Not for the wide world. <laughs> you kill me to deny it. Farewell. Uh, Terry, sweet so Beatrice. I'm glad I'm here. There is no love in you. Oh, Beatrice. I'm gone. Farewell. <sighs> in faith, I will go. Uh, we'll be friends first. You dare. Easier be friends with me than fight with mine enemy. Is Claudio thine enemy? Is he not approved in the height of villain that has slandered, scorned, and dishonored my kinswoman? God, that I were a man. Bear her in hand until they come to take hands, and then, with public accusation, all covered slander, unmitigated rancor. No, oh, God, that I were mad, I would eat his heart in the marketplace. Hey, hear me, Beatrice. Tell dog with a man out a window a proper saying. Nay, but Beatrice. Sweet hero, she is wrong. She is uncovered. She is undone. Beatrice. Oh, princess and county. Surely, a princely testimony, a goodly count, can go forward. Sweet gallant, surely. Uh, that I were a man for his sake, or that I had any friend would be a man for my sake. But manhood is not even to courtesy, and valor is a compliment. And men are only turned into Tom <laughs> and trim ones too. He is now as violent as Hercules that only tells a lie and swears it. I cannot be a man with wishing, therefore, I will die a woman with grieving. <laughs> Terry, sweet Beatrice. <laughs> By this hand, I love thee. Use it for my love some other way than swearing by it. Think you in your soul that Claudio hath wronged Hero? Hey, as sure as I have a thought over his soul. Enough. I am engaged. I will challenge him. <laughs> Kiss your hand, and so I leave you. By this hand, Claudio shall render me a dear account. As you hear of me, so think of me. I'll go. Comfort your cousin. I must say she is dead. And so farewell. Uh, I have revisited Hamlet several times over the years, and this time I thought it would be fun to do an insincere portrayal of Hamlet um, in a slapstick, farcical setting. Um, and while listening to some opera music one day, I got the idea, what if Hamlet was the sad crying clown, Pagliacci? Um, so I started working on it with that in mind. However, during the process, we've had some copyright issues getting the music from Pagliacci, which was an 
integral part of what this sketch was going to be. Um, so we improvised some free use music instead uh, and used a little snippet from Pagliacci that would be allowable by copyright. Um, so that's what you're about to see, um, Hamlet, the Clown Prince of Denmark. the question whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them to die to sleep. No more. Buy a sleep to say we end the heartaches. natural shocks <laughs> that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. <sighs> to die. To sleep. <sighs> to sleep. Perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub, for in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. Hi, I'm Howard. Hi, I'm Reno. And when we were rehearsing this scene, I heard something in it that reminded me of my childhood. Uh, it was a little annoying at the time, but also very endearing. So we decided, what if... That you have wronged me doth appear in this you have condemned and noted Lucius Pella for taking bribes here of the Sardians, wherein my letters, praying on his side because I knew the man, was slighted off. Eh, you wronged yourself to write in such a case. Ah, oh, in such a time as this, it is not meet that every nice offense should bear his comment. Eh, let me tell you, Cassius, you yourself are much condemned to have an itching palm, to sell and mart your offices for gold to undeservers. I an itching palm. You know that you are Brutus that speak this. <laughs> or by the gods, this speech were else your last. Ah, ah, the name of Cassius honors this corruption. 
and chastisement doth therefore hide his head. Chastisement? Hmm. Remember, March. The Ides of March, remember. Did not great Julius bleed for justice's sake? <laughs> what villain touched his body that did stab and not for justice? <laughs> what? Shall one of us who that struck the foremost man of all this world, but for supporting robbers, shall we now contaminate our fingers with base bribes? Oy, and ah. sell the mighty space of our large honors for so much trash as may be grasped thus? <laughs> I had rather be a dog and bay the moon than such a Roman. Bait not me, Brutus. I'll not endure it. You forget yourself to hedge me in. <laughs> I am a soldier. I order in practice, abler than yourself to make conditions. <laughs> Go to. You are not, Cassius. Uh, yeah. I uh, say you're not. Urge me no more. I may forget myself. Have mind upon your health. Tempt me no further. <laughs> Away, slight man. <laughs> Is possible. Ah, hear me, for I will speak. Must I give way and room to your rash cola? Shall I be frighted when a madman stares? Ay, oh, ye gods, ye gods, must I endure all this? All this? Ay, more. Fret till your proud heart break. <laughs> Go show your slaves how choleric you are and make your bondmen tremble. Uh, really, must I bouge? Must I observe you? Must I stand and crouch under your testy humor? Really, by the gods, you shall digest the venom of your spleen, though it do split you. <laughs> for from this day forth, I'll use you for my mirth. Yea, for my laughter when you are waspish. <laughs> Is come to this? Mm. You say you're a better soldier. Let it appear so. Make your vaunting true, and it shall please me well. For mine own part, I shall be glad to learn of noble men. Uh. Huh. You wrong me in every way. You wrong me, Brutus. I said elder soldier, not better. Did I say better? Ah, if you did, I care not. Uh, when Caesar lived, he does not thus have moved me. <laughs> peace, peace. You durst not so have tempted him. <laughs> I durst not. No. Uh, what? Durst not tempt him? <laughs> For your life, you durst not. You presume too much upon my love. I may do that I shall be sorry for. You have done that you should be sorry for. There is no terror, Cassius, in your threats. For I am armed so strong in honesty that they pass by me like the idle wind, which I respect not. Oh. Oh. I did send to you for gold. Yeah. <laughs> certain sums of gold, which you denied me. No. Uh, by, for I can raise no money by any vile means. <laughs> by heaven, I had rather coin my heart and drop my blood for drachmas than <laughs> to wring from the hard hands of peasants their vile trash by any indirection. I did send you gold to pay my legions, which you denied me. Was that done like Cassius? Should I have answered Caius Cassius so? When Marcus Brutus grows so covetous to lock such rascal counters from his friends, from his friends, be ready, gods, with all your thunderbolts, dash him to pieces. I denied you not. You did. I did not. Hmm. He was but a fool that brought my answer back. Oh, Brutus hath thrived my heart. <laughs> A friend should bear his friend's infirmities, but Brutus, 
makes mine greater than they are. I do not, till you practice them on me. You love me not. Ah, I do not like your faults. <laughs> A friendly eye could never see such <laughs> faults. A flatterer's would not, though they appear as huge as high Olympus. Oh, come, Antony, and young Octavius, come. Revenge yourselves alone upon Cassius, right. for Cassius is a weary of the world. <laughs> Hated by one he loves, braved by his brother. <sighs> Checked like a bondman, all his faults absolved, set in a notebook, lined and conned by roads, to be cast into my teeth. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I could weep my spirit from mine eyes. Oh, from his eyes. Oh, oh, there, there's my dagger, and here my naked breast within a heart purer than Plutus mine, <laughs> richer than gold. If that thou beest a Roman, Take it forth, I that denied thee gold will give my heart. Strike as thou didst at Caesar, for I know that when thou didst hate him most, thou lovest him better than thou ever lovest Cassius. <laughs> Sheath your dagger. Be angry when you will, it shall have scope. Do what you will. Dishonor shall be humor. <laughs> Oy, Cassius, you are yoked with a lamb that carries flint, as, <laughs> who much in force shows a hasty spark and straight is cold again. Huh. Hath Cassius lived long to be but moith and laughter to his Brutus? <laughs> when grief and blood ill temper vexeth him, when I spoke that, I um, I was uh, I was ill-tempered too. <laughs> Do you confess so much? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Give me your hand. Uh, in my heart too. <laughs> Have you not love enough to bear with me? When that rash humor which uh, my mother gave me makes me forgetful. Yes, Cassius. And from henceforth, when you are over earnest with your Brutus, I'll think your mother chides and leave you so. <laughs> <laughs> the genesis of my Adriana was thinking about in modern times, um, if these people were having this kind of public marital dispute, um, what circumstances would that make sense under? And so the more I thought about it, I decided to set it in a bar setting. Um, and because of the pandemic that we are currently in, I thought it would be more interesting if maybe she's seen him and then she calls him on her phone as opposed to having the conversation with him face to face. So uh, the idea behind this piece with Adriana is that she is calling Antiphilus and leaving him a very heated video voicemail. All has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Antiphilus. Is not available. At the tone, please record your message. Ah, uh, Antiphilus, look strange and frown. Some other mistress hath thy sweet aspects? <laughs> I'm not Adriana, nor thy wife. The time was once when unurged thou wouldst vow that never words were music to thine ear, that never object pleasing in thine eye, that never touch well welcome to thy hand, that never meat sweet savored in thy taste unless 
I spake or looked or touched or carved to thee. <laughs> how comes it now, my husband? Oh, how comes it that thou art thus estranged from thyself? <laughs> thyself I call it, being strange to me, that undividable, incorporate, and better than thy dear self's better part. <laughs> oh, do not tear thyself from me, for no, my love, as easy mayest thou fall a drop of water in the breaking gulf, and take unmingled thence that drop again without addition or diminishing, as take from me thyself, and not me too. Dearly, would it touch thee to the quick, shouldst thou but hear that I were licentious, and that this body, consecrate to thee by ruffian lust, should be contaminate. Wouldst thou not spit at me, and spurn at me, and hurl the name of husband in my face, and tear the stained skin from my harlot brow, and from my false hand, cut the wedding ring, and break it with a deep divorcing vow? I know thou canst, and therefore see thou do it. I am possessed with an adulterate blot. My blood has been mingled with the crime of lust. For if we two be one and thy play false, I do digest the poison of thy flesh, being strumpeted by thy contagion. Keep them fair league and truce with thy true bed. I live disdain, thou undishonored. I am doing Iago from Othello, and I ask myself, what if Iago had Facebook Live? The Cassio loves Desdemona, I do well believe it. She loves him, tis apt and of great credit. The more, how be it that I endure him not, is of a constant loving noble nature, and I dare think he'll prove to Desdemona a most dear husband. I love her too, not, not of absolute lust, though peradventure I stand accountant for as great a sin, but partly led to diet my revenge, for that I do suspect the lusty moor hath leaped into my seat. The very thought whereof doth like a poisonous mineral gnaw my inwards, and nothing can or shall content my soul till I'm evened with him, wife for wife. Or failing so, yet that I put the more at least into a jealousy so strong that judgment cannot cure. Which thing to do? If this poor trash of Venice, Rodrigo, who I trace for his quick hunting, stand the pudding on, I'll have our Michael Cassio on the hip abuse him to the more in the right garb, for I fear Cassio with my nightcap too. Make the more thank me, love, me, reward me for making him egregiously an ass and practicing upon his peace and quiet, even to madness. <sighs> Tis here, but yet confused. Knavery's plain face is never seen till used. Hello again. Uh, I want to thank you once more for joining us for Scattered Shakespeare. Um, I enjoyed this process and was actually surprised quite pleasantly by what we were able to do um, in a small amount of time with just a few actors. We hope you enjoyed the experience and we thank you again for watching.